bigger and better Amen. things. Amen. We moved on to someone who holds everything together. Amen. He protected us as we slumbered in our weakest state on last night, and he woke us up with joy and happiness yes. so today. And can we give him a hand clap of praise? Yes. So let's read our scripture. It will be coming from Psalms 37, <coughs> verses 23 through 24. And it is an honor and a privilege to see Sister Candy Amen. in her presence. Amen. 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 Isn't God good? Yes. Yes. Better than good. Yes. Amen. Our scripture reads as follows. The steps of a good man are ordered by the, by the Lord, and he delighteth himself in his ways. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord uphold him with his hand. The blessed word of God for the blessed people of God. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We magnify your name. For God is in your name that we can stand. We can stand in victory, knowing that the enemy has been defeated. God, some people come for one thing, some people come for another. Some people come for a touch, and some people come to be filled. But God, you know every issue, and you can meet every need. Now, God, I ask that you let me recede as you proceed. You come forth, I'll step back. And I ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen and amen again. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I am here to tell you that there is a point in your life that you will come to where the next step you are about to face is a critical step. Because life will press on you. Life will shove you. And life will push you down. Life will push you on the ground and stomp all over you. But I got news for you on today. You can get right on back up. But life will not stop there. Life will force you to a place to where you are at the end of your rope. Has anybody ever been at the end of their rope on today? Where it will be, a, where it will be critical for you to act. Where the next decision that you make will make you or the next decision you make will break you. Brothers and sisters, I've been broken. And I do not want to go back to a broken place in my life. Things can happen in your life that can push on you until you feel that there is a choice that you must make to progress. You have to keep pressing towards the mark of a higher calling because the enemy is on your trail and the enemy is hunting you down. Brothers and sisters, life can put the squeeze on you until there is a step that you must take and that step can change your life for the better or it can change your life for the worse. For the worse. Can I get a witness in here on today? Which step are you going to take? Are you going to take the step in the right direction or are you going to continue to step, take the steps down the road of destruction? You see, it could be like traveling on a pathway up the mountain and the path becomes narrow. Brothers and sisters, as we travel up the mountain, the air becomes very thin and it gets hard to breathe. As we continue to move up the mountain, we have to understand that the road becomes narrow and all of a sudden rocks and gravel becomes to begin to fall in the road uh -huh. and the trail becomes dangerous and it gets smaller and smaller. We can see the signs, but we do not act on the signs. Right, what right. is going on, brothers right. and sisters? Why are we continuing to ignore the signs when we are going down the wrong path? Huh? You have been traveling on this path for some time now when suddenly you realize that this path is only a few inches wide. You realize that this path is beginning to crumble and all of a sudden you have to call on the name of Jesus because you can't make it on this path on your own. Now, brothers and sisters, the road is wide because the road leads to destruction. But Jesus said narrow is the road yes, to the yes, right road. Yes, yes. Brothers and sisters, the devil will tell you that the road you're traveling on is going to be okay. And young people in here listening on today, he wants to get your attention because your parents have put you on the right road. They have put you on the narrow road. But the devil is tugging on you. The devil is pulling on you. He will tell you how easy the path that you're traveling on is. He will tell
tell you how wide the path is and the liberty yes. you will receive on this path. He will tell you that everything is going to be all right. That you can do what you want to do when you want to do it. You will find out that he was lying to you all along. And the path lead to destruction. Can I get a witness in here? Let's wake up and celebrate in here. Who wants to be righteous in the sight of the Lord? Because if you love him, then you will obey him. And Jesus said, if you keep following his path, then you will follow the path to eternity. The path for eternal bliss. You better get on the right road in here and let the Lord order your steps. God is telling me to tell someone that you have reached a fork in the road of your life and that you know from the depth of your soul that destruction and one step in the right direction will lead to protection and safety then brothers and sisters we can understand that we have a critical decision to make yes, in life. Yes, yes, we must seek the Lord for direction before we move another inch because the next step you take is an important step it is a stride that will bring one result or it will bring another result your next step is crucial yes, your next yes. step is important your next decision should be ordered by the Lord you have traveled to a place where the next step is an important step 
It's an important one. You have turned it to a point where there is a choice to make concerning beginning a war with God or continuing your journey with the devil. You are at a position in your life where you must decide. You must get it right. You must make the right decision if you want to go left or if you want to go right. And God is always right. So the devil is on the left. As a person, you need to determine if you want to keep letting the enemy of your soul have you living in fear. Letting the enemy of your soul steal your joy. Can I get a witness? Letting the enemy of your soul make you feel insecure. Let the enemy of your soul have you avoiding church. Let the enemy of your soul have you going astray from God. Letting the enemy of your soul send you on a one-way trip to hell. I am here to tell you it here that hell is real today. And hell doesn't care how old you are. Hell is enveloping people, brothers and sisters. And it was made for the for Satan and his and the yes. fallen angels. But God is a good God. Yes. And God yes. will give you the desires of your heart. Yes. Whether you want to serve him or whether you want to serve Satan. But if you serve Satan, then in hell you will open up your eyes. If I could, if it could be today huh, that you are at a point in your life uh, where you are looking for something more than what you already have. Uh, I've got news for you. Uh, nothing's better than Jesus. Uh, Jesus has been better to me uh, than I've been to myself. Uh, I wasn't fit to live or die, uh, but then Jesus came along. Uh, he took me out of my mess and started me on my way. Uh, may I suggest that you give Jesus a try? Uh, try Jesus. Uh, he's all right. Uh, he's all right. Uh, he's all right. Uh, he's can I get a witness? I can, can I suggest to you uh, that it is no accident uh, that God has allowed you to be here today. Uh, he is reaching out to you today in this service. Uh, brothers and sisters, he is knocking on the door of your heart. Uh, open up that door and let Jesus come in and say, yes, you know, oh, today. Uh, if you open up that door, uh, won't it make it all right? Uh, won't it do a good way? You better reach out and grab on to his unchanging hand. When you grab on to his hand, he will never let you go and he will order your steps. How do you know if you are in a place where the Lord needs to order your steps? Let me talk to you in here right now. This is simple. You are always in the place where God needs to order your steps. If you find yourself at a place in your life where you can no longer serve God, then say to yourself, uh, Lord, order my steps. Uh, if you search your so heart and find uh, that you've been corrupted by the things of the world, say, Lord, order my steps. Uh, if you discover that you are not obedient uh, to the word of God, uh, say, Lord, order my steps. Uh, I don't have nobody saying, Lord, order my steps. Uh, if you are doing evil in the sight of the Almighty, say, Lord, order my steps. Uh, if you are thinking about giving up on God because he won't give up on you, uh, say, Lord, order my steps. Uh, Lord, I'm thinking that uh, you are directing me uh, through the path of life. Uh, you are guiding me uh, every step of the way. Uh, never left me nor forsake me. You've been my God, uh, my all in all. Uh, I just feel good right now. All right. If you find yourself guilty of any of these statements, then you need to you need God to order your steps. Yes, yes, the word yes. says uh, that there are some things that are going to happen to you uh, if you turn away from God. Uh, this is what will happen. Uh, God will scatter you. Uh, God will not prolong your days. Uh, God will cause heaven and earth uh, to bear witness against you. Uh, if God is against you, who can be for you? Uh, nothing will go right in your life. Uh, you will serve idols. Uh, you will serve the bottle. Huh? You will serve crack pipe, the crack pipe. Huh? You will serve your material yeah, possessions. Yeah. Huh? You will serve fear. Huh? You will serve bondage. Huh? And you will be in sadness. Huh? You will serve failure. Huh? You will be in a big mess that you cannot get out of. Huh? Idolatry is a corruption of the heart. Huh? Idolatry always begins in the heart. Huh? It is a heart issue. Huh? If you think because the people that live in the days of Moses huh? and the people that lived in the days of Jeremiah because they worship uh, good faith and, 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 and straw uh, that you are too much uh -huh. and too great above that worship. Uh, they were worshiping wood and stone then uh, and we are worshiping wood and stone now uh, right. because it is in the heart. Uh, it is a matter of the heart. Uh, you say, Pastor, I don't 
don't worship stone idols. Uh, I don't worship wooden idols. Uh, yes, you do because you worship the car you drive. Uh, you worship the wife you have. Uh, you worship the children that you have. Uh, you worship the job that you have. Uh, because you put all of those things uh, above God. Uh, and anything that is above God uh, is an idol. Uh, you know, Because some of us are all guilty of idol worship. But we need to step back a moment. Take two steps back up and let God take two steps forward. And say, God, order myself. Let me tell you something right now. Can you get with me on this journey called preaching? I feel so good. God bless me now. You bless me now, God. You've been too much good to me. You've been so, so good to me. I can feel your power. I can feel your anointing. Let your power fall now. Let your glory fall into the presence of your people. We magnify your name. Let me say this. If the enemy has invaded your ranks, then let the Lord order your steps. If there has been influences from the world, brothers and sisters, let the Lord order your steps. If you have been corrupted, then let God order your steps. With the things of this world, brothers and sisters, if you have done evil in the sight of God, then ask God to stop that evil influence and ask him to direct your path. Then ask for his forgiveness and let God order your steps. Moses said that it is impossible that it is possible to be corrupted huh, because of the matters of your heart. Huh. It starts on the inside and then it bubbles up to the outside. That's how the devil and demons work. That's how angels in heaven work. They start on the inside because they can't touch what's on the outside. You see, they're not in our material world. They can transform themselves in the form of man for a little while. But they have to reach you from the depths of your soul. So they are putting information in your head. Little girls wanting to be little boys. Uh, little boys wanted to be little girls uh, And brothers and sisters Me and not knowing uh, Where the place is as a man uh, The devil is out there uh, And the I devil is free, ordering free. people's steps uh, But what you got to do uh, Is ask God to order your steps uh, You need to realize uh, One simple thing uh, That you are lost uh, And you need to be discovered uh, That you never really repented from your sin uh, Yes people go to church all the time uh, But they truly don't know God. I'm not saying if you know God that I'm talking to you, but for the ones that don't know God, then you need to do a self-evaluation and you need to say simply this, Lord, order my steps. Brothers and sisters, if you have gone astray from God and you think that you got the spirit that you should have, then you need to realize that you need God's help more than you need yours and say, Lord, order my steps. And God can bring Break the hold of sin. Has sin been containing you? Has it been holding you down? Then call on the name of Jesus. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, then say, Lord, order my steps. I'm tired of walking down the long road of destruction. God is wide. I need the narrow road of righteousness. Order my steps. I need a relationship with you. I need to repent and let you take control. If God is in control, then he's going to work it out. Uh, if God is in control, uh, then he's going to lead you every step of the way. Amen. And from the point you can see uh, where you have drifted and recognized your condition, then you need to stop right there uh, because you have come to a fork in the road uh, and you uh -huh. need to decide uh, if you want to be in control uh, if you want, or if you want God to be in control. Uh, if by some beautiful, merciful act of God, uh, you become aware of your condition yes, yes. and you open up the state of your mind uh, and you receive a wake-up call uh, and you recognize the dilemma that you are in. If you acknowledge the predicament that you are in, then God will take the de what the devil meant for your bad and God will make it meant for your good. How many times have God taken what the devil meant for my bad and turned it for my good? How many times have God taken what the devil meant for your bad and turned it for your good? Well, let me ask you another question. Did you magnify him? Did you praise his name? Did you acknowledge him? Or did you brush it off as happenstance? Because God deserves the praise and God deserves the glory and God deserves the credit. You gotta praise Him. At the sound of the name of Jesus, the demons have to bow to Him. All you got to do is call on the name.
name of Jesus. And when you call on the name of Jesus, I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care what you've been going through. I don't care what you feel like. I don't care how hopeless it seems. Things begin to get rough. Things begin to become sudden because you call on the S-O-N uh, and now your rainy days uh, have become your sunny days. Uh, and God ever taken your rainy days uh, and made them your sunny days. Uh, that's because you let him order yourself. Uh, I won't be before you long, brothers and sisters. Uh, I know you may be hurting right now. Uh, I know you may feel like you're in trouble right now. Uh, I know it may be difficult right now. Uh, but the next step is crucial. Uh, you need to let God order your steps. Uh, Ask God right now, order my steps in the Lord. If you brothers and sisters would just let him take control, he will give you the victory. He will make things safe for you. He will put you towards the right road, the narrow road. He will change the direction from negativity to positivity. He will take the peer pressure that happens to our young children and he will make them leaders of men. He will make you fishers of men. You don't have to put up with those people around you and you don't fit in their clique. It's because God made you unique. You have nothing to do with them. It's all about Jesus Christ. And if you let Jesus order your steps, uh, then God will make a way uh, of escape. Uh, you don't have to deal with those clicks. Uh, you don't have to deal with the people who disagree with you. Uh, you don't have to deal with the naysayers. Uh, you don't have to deal with the people who talk about you. Uh, you don't have to worry about Tom, Dick, and Harry. You don't have to be like the next door neighbors of Joneses uh, because God is ordering your steps. Uh, and you have to realize uh, when God orders your steps uh, that you're rich. Uh, you're super blessed to get it back. And everything will work out in the end Because he sent his only begotten son And his name was Jesus Christ And God sent him down for it in two generations I feel like preaching right now Did not get a witness Did not get some help in here So I have about one or two or three Holy Ghost filled people Who can stand to the feet And magnify the Lord For the goodness that he's done And magnify the Lord and come down in the form of a man. It was Jesus who set me free. It was Jesus who opened up the scroll. And when Jesus opened up the scroll, he said, prepare me a bite because I need to reorder their steps because they failed in the garden. And brothers and sisters, Jesus, God sent Jesus down to 40 and two generations. And he went through a life and he served the Lord. God ordered his steps, uh, and all of a sudden, uh, he finds himself in turmoil, uh, in conflict. Uh, he finds himself on a cross, uh, and he stayed up there, and he died for you, me, and everybody else. Uh, and he said on yes. today uh, to give your life to him, uh, and let him order your steps. Uh, has he been good to you? Uh, he certainly has been good to me. Uh, he woke me up this morning. Uh, me with my right mind, gave me the use and activities of my limb, gave me a beautiful wife, gave me a beautiful family, gave me a beautiful church family, gave me everything that I have. He's been good to me. I'm a praise him, brothers and sisters, in the morning. I'm a praise him in the noon. I'm a praise him in the evening. I'm a praise him in the midnight hour. And when the enemy comes in, like a flood, and God raises up his I will praise him in the morning. Can we praise God? Because God has ordered our steps. Brothers and sisters, you just don't comprehend who God is. When we look at this little rock that's floating in outer space, spinning over a thousand miles per hour, and rotating around the sun at thousands of miles per hour, Jesus. He placed it there. And it's just one little planet in one little solar system. And then you have billions upon billions of galaxies. Billions upon billions of planets in the galaxies. And we don't trust him to guide us. We don't trust him to lead us simply because we want to be in control. 
that we can't comprehend, but we're trying to control. We are trying to control our very destiny for eternity. And without his guidance, it is hopeless. It is his way or the highway. But I've said this before. He is a gentleman. Look, he will stand back. He will prod you. He will tug on you. He will try to get your attention. But he will not force himself. Because that's just not his way. Yes, Lord. Nobody wants forced love. It's something to be shared and expressed. It is an action word. And if he gave you everything, your health, your strength, your job, your family, your protection, your security, his grace and his mercy, who are we? Put him back on that cross every time. He's not going back up there. You see, it was a tragedy. Because that was the one time the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit was split. Because the Son was on the cross. And we were supposed to be up there. But he went up there. Simply us out of eternal destruction. And the devil is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. It's all he's good for. And God gave us life and he gave us life abundantly. <clears throat> that means for eternity. You just don't understand and comprehend what heaven is like. Because you live here. You don't live in the spiritual realm. Once you die to sin, and you were baptized in the Holy Spirit, now you have that Spirit of God. And the Word of God says, if you love me, you keep my commands. What are you saying to you today? If you love me, you will accept the gift, the gift of salvation. That's what covering the steps. our young people. You're just so blessed. Not only are you blessed financially, but you're blessed with intellect. You have a cornucopia of technology that can enhance you. But what are you doing with it? Are you using it for entertainment or are you using it to be enhanced? Are you using it to learn more about God? Are you playing video games? Listening to uh, some of these rap people? I don't know who they are. Right. <laughs> you need to examine that. You have the world at your disposal, but it makes no sense to gain the whole world yourself. Because what you're going to gain here is nothing compared to what you're going to get in heaven. But you're not going to get there unless you ask God to follow your steps. Everyone standing to their feet. All young people, please come around the altar. School is getting ready to start. I think it's going to be starting before. It'll be served until the party county starts August the 14th. You guys have to deal with a lot of issues. We try to pour as much as we can into you, but the world is coming. You can't succumb to it. We love you, and we're counting on you. 
Here's the deal. I want to go to heaven. And I've RSVP my ticket. I've been dotted every I, I crossed every T. But it's just not going to be the same without my children there. It's not going to be the same without my loved ones there. So we need you guys to stay focused. Press towards the mark of a higher calling, not to fit in to your cliques. Who cares about peer pressure? Do what's right. The spirit is telling you what is right because you are covered by your parents. And if I don't say anything else to you on today, don't get relaxed and lackadaisical because we are giving you everything you have. You work hard. I know you do. I hear all the good reports. I see the gleam in your eyes. I see the hope in your eyes. But always lean and depend on Jesus Christ. Because that is where all of your help comes from. When mom and daddy can't do it, when the teacher isn't acting right, when your friends aren't acting right, you can always count on Jesus. Amen. Let us pray, O oh, heavenly and righteous God. We magnify and we bless your name. And God, we come to the knowledge that our hearts are not as pure as they should be. God, we acknowledge that we haven't presented ourselves as righteously as we should have in front of our children. But God, let us get it right. Let us follow your statutes. Let us follow your laws. Let us surrender to your will. Let us display to them our character, the character of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so they can comprehend and understand that that is the way that they are supposed to be characterized as well. Now, God, I ask that you put a hedge of protection all around them, that you bless them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. And when the enemy comes in to attack them, that you receive his hand that you repel him now in the name of Jesus uh, let them strive God let them press God to serve you first and foremost uh, and God even mess with their minds uh, so that whenever something is not like you uh, comes in to inhibit their mind uh, that you repel it away also and God in the name of Jesus enhance them intellectually so that learning will be easy and God even though uh, they go to public schools or private schools uh, when Whenever the society tries to push something in their minds uh, that is not like you, uh, God, we thank you that you will give them the ability to comprehend and understand uh, that it is not the right way to be uh, and it is not the right thing to do. Uh, now, God, enhance our children, God, and protect our children, God, and let them understand uh, that you love them more than they can ever imagine. And God, we ask now, uh, if their parents do not know you and the pardoning of their sin, uh, to God, don't tell them uh, to tell the children what to do. Uh, let them show the children how they are supposed yes, to act. Uh, and God would thank you. For if there's anyone under the sound of our voice uh, that do not know you, uh, we know that all they have to do is call on the name of Jesus. Uh, and God, even these young ones uh, that have presented themselves uh, at your throne, uh, God would thank you now uh, that they too can call on the name of Jesus. Uh, you know you love the little children. Uh, and you said, suffer not the little children to come unto me. Uh, yeah. Here they are, God. Uh, they need you, God. Uh, some know what they need you for, uh, and some are just easy and fine, uh, but you search the hearts and the mind, uh, and you work every situation out for them, God. Uh, let them go forth, God, uh, and let them be blessed uh, as they go out and as they come back. Uh, and we thank you now, Lord, for your protection. We thank you now, Lord, for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. And God, we even thank you for Sister Candy, uh, who has come here on today. Uh, in her beautiful family, God. Uh, let them celebrate, God, your victory. Uh, let them celebrate, God, your strength. Uh, let them celebrate, God, your grace and your mercy uh, for bringing us thus this far. Uh, we thank you now and we magnify your name. Uh, you are worthy to be praised. Uh, and as we send out the blessings, uh, as we send out the praises, uh, we ask that you cover these little ones. Uh, and God, we thank you, God. Uh, we won't take them lightly. Like God, we will love them and cherish them uh, and help them reach the next level of glory uh, in Christ Jesus.
Asking this prayer in the name of the precious Father, precious Son, and precious Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.